Our league season starts in three weeks. Guerrero, he nearly left the club for £17 million. He's still here for now. Of course, he turned down two offers to leave at the end of last episode. And now we need to react. Not just to the Guerrero move, but also to the many sales we've made this summer. £10 million has been received. And whilst that has mostly been made up through Goldsmith and Sergio, it does leave us with a slightly trimmed down first team I'd love to add some players to. Of course, we have got Kamara joining us in a matter of days. NDIA is also joining us come the end of the month. And maybe, just maybe, Connor Heskiff will be joining us as well. Really keen to get our hands on this guy. A bit of a physical monster. Think he could be a great centre-back pickup. Just as a reminder, though... There's quite a lot of teams interested in him. Off the back of all our sales, we've got almost £10 million in the overall balance, plenty of wage budget to spend. We are going to spend some of it today. That is a promise. Let's run the intro and get straight into things. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 54, and today it is all about recruitment. If you're excited for today's video, if you're enjoying the series still, go down below, leave a like. Let's see if we can smash, and this might be very ambitious, 4,000 likes. We've not done that in forever. It helps in the algorithm. It helps keep this series alive, and, well, people continuing to get recommended on their home screens. It's appreciated a lot. So right now our first team sits at 23 players, 25 players if you include the two Senegalese youngsters joining us. Of course, amongst these players, we've also got the likes of Jervain McCulloch, who I would like to move on, and also Luke Chambers. Two players who, to be honest, I just don't really think are good enough to be depth options. And if we're getting rid of them, we're going to need to get in some replacements for them to add the depth we lack. When it comes to the first team, areas of real focus for us are going to be a new defensive mid, maybe even two. I love Xiao Victor as a player for the future I love Timmy as just a, a man called Timmy who probably is good enough to be a backup option in the championship but our other defensive mid options are Sean Nesbitt who I'll level with you I don't exactly love and the other man who really is the only other backup for the defensive mid position is Stuart Masters who I mean he's fine in the case of an emergency not sure we want to be relying on him. Of course, last year we did have Brody Spencer for some depth as well, but he has now left for £1.2 million, which I'm very happy to receive. We need to reinvest some of that. We have got our scout recruitment focus set up to look at defensive midfielders. The one player they've got here is Mate Ivkovic, who plays for Port Vale. Not a bad defensive mid option. I do wonder if we could do a little bit better. I figured one place that might be good to start is just on the player search screen. We haven't got that many players scouted of first team quality, so I think it's going to be down to us to find some of those players. Here we've got a search of players with age at most 23, competent at defensive midfielder. There are some players here. We've got a New Zealander who doesn't look so great. I think we may even, maybe even looked to him last episode, actually. Malangu here, I was hoping would be really good because his name's quite fun to say. Transfer listed by request at Roma. He's not very good. The third player in this list, though, he is the kind of player we're looking for. Ricardo Sanchez, Costa Rican international, 42 caps at the age of 21. He's the third player in this list. Costa Rica is a really good place to pick up players in Football Manager. He looks like he could be a phenomenal deep line playmaker. Look at his attributes. 16 passing, 16 vision, 16 technique. Good balance, not the craziest speed, but he wouldn't need that playing in our system. And he actually looks like... He might be affordable, uh, I say that. Uh, apparently he wants wages between 7.5 and £9,000 a week and many release clauses. We'll get a scout report going for him. Of course, we have got up to three ESC slots available with uh, hopefully Ferrar instant picking up permanent kind of work permit status. Going to negotiate a deal here for Sanchez, who I think could be available for in the region of 600 to 700,000 pounds. We'll offer 600. They've asked for 700. Can we just do 700? We can. I think at that price, he's worth a punt. I suppose the big question now becomes, what are his wage demands going to be? The fourth player down in this list is Brandon Rodriguez. Not quite as exciting. He doesn't look like an awful player, though. I am wondering, should I be looking at Costa Rica's national team? Because there's a few players showing up here. Also, if you're wondering, Jack, why have you made a bid for Sanchez now when you've not even got him scouted? I imagine by the end of this little segment here, hopefully we'll have bids on a few different players. I need to get the ball rolling on these deals now because work permits take time to sort out. 
as I mentioned in the intro, the season starts in three weeks. We really can't afford to wait to make any moves. I mean, this bloke plays for the Georgian national team. 17 caps for Georgia. He can play centre-back defensive mid and centre attacking mid, but he has no concept of central midfield. That really is a football manager thing, isn't it? Uh, as far as deep line playmakers go, I I've seen better. He's not that good. I realise, I mentioned a second ago about checking out the Costa Rica national team, and then I didn't actually do it. I'm looking at it here now. There are some good players. I say they're good. I'm entirely basing this off the fact that they're all in their early 20s, late teens, and playing for the national team. They must be good. Of course, any of the players who are 17 won't be able to join us before they turn 18. So they're not really solutions to the problem that we're dealing with right now. Apparently, I've already got Roger Rojas here scouted. Presumably, he has no interest in joining us. Indeed, he doesn't. Zaniga here looks pretty good. He plays for Aluense. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they are like the best team in Costa Rica. I think they play continental football as well. Uh, being realistic, I don't think any of their players are going to want to join us. But if I'm wrong, that would be a pleasant surprise. Uh, yeah, Zaniga doesn't want to join us. Aluense's key man is this guy, Eric Salas. He looks pretty good as a defensive midfielder option. Obviously, he plays for Aluense. And yeah, he, he doesn't want to join us either. I feel like they're the big dogs of Costa Rica and their players aren't going to want to join us. But there's a few players playing for other teams here that maybe we could check out. Kevin Lara here, a striker with low finishing. Where have I seen that before? Does he even want to join us? No. I mean, someone like Cesar Mora here looks absolutely mad. He looks really, really good as kind of a creative attacking option. However... Yeah, he doesn't want to join us either. This really is a dead end. It turns out the only players that want to join me are the ones who don't play for the good teams in uh, this country, of which there's not many of those players. Ron Richard Montero, though, doesn't play for one of the big clubs. Does he want to join us? No, he'd like to continue development at his current club. Um, that means that when he turns 18, he might change his mind. To be honest, he's not even that good, is he? Mamuka Cecilia. That is a fun name to say, isn't it? Another Georgian player. For some reason, Georgians and Costa Ricans have taken over my player search results screen. Uh, this guy, he's a bit of a specialist as a deep line playmaker who can't really run. He's not a bad player in this area of the pitch. Don't know if he's the kind of player who I'm desperate to make a bid on right away. But we'll get a scout report just in case. Damjan Petreski here looks very, very interesting. A player who is probably more of a left back when you look at his attributes, although he's right footed. Has really good determination and really well rounded physicals. Could definitely do a job as a defensive midfielder. Probably a little bit raw. The kind of player who, if he was 18 years old, I'd be all over him. But because he's 21, He's a bit past it. I realise that sentence without context sounds mental. Please do not take that out of context. This guy, Oscar Valadares, he looks fun. He looks interesting. He looks like I've trained him, to be fair. He can play left attacking mid, striker, right attacking mid, and defensive midfielder, because, I mean, of, of course he can. I mean, in our search for a deep line playmaker, he's not really the solution to any of our problems, but he's only just turned 19. He was released by his club in Honduras after a 30-goal season. I feel like even if he doesn't get a work permit, I kind of just want to sign him. Talked about the need to maybe bring in a striker. Uh, could, could we do worse than this guy? I feel like he's quite good. I want to get rid of the minimum release clause. The relegation release clause is going to be a struggle to get rid of. I'll offer him £3.2,000 for a four-year deal. How about 3.5 for the four-year deal? He is going to sign on the dotted line. Um... <laughs> I really should get a scout report on him, shouldn't I? I've got carried away there, but he does look good. Yeah, and he looks fun. I've never had a Honduran player before. I don't necessarily believe there is a Callum Goldsmith hole in our team, but if there was one, could Oscar here fill that hole? I feel like he kind of could. Right, back on the search for a defensive midfielder. I mean, we have got some players, apparently, that we have scouted here. Udo here can play defensive midfielder. Why can this man play defensive mid? Pardon the pun, but... Check this guy out, uh, Randovan Pillar. Uh, he could be a pillar in the defensive midfield position. If by pillar you mean he doesn't do, do any defending whatsoever. He's actually a really well-rounded deep-line playmaker who just lacks massively in the defensive department. But he's currently only on £500 a week, so I feel like he's worth investigating. His ratings have been pretty good, albeit in Chechia. Um, yeah, it's not exactly the most prestigious of places. As much as I love specialist deep line playmakers, uh, this guy might be pushing it too far. He has one jumping reach and two physicals above a nine. I mean, I know I said I don't necessarily need pace in this position, 
I need something to look at, and whilst his technicals and mentals are good, I can't ignore the physicals. Honestly, of all the players we've looked at, Ricardo Sanchez looks head and shoulders above the rest. If we could pick him up, that would be massive. Although I do like the look of our new Honduran forward option. There were a couple of other players I looked at here, like Forreson, who is an Icelandic free agent. Not a bad player by any means, but he's been a free agent for six months, and he's not really the deep-line playmaker type. One area of the pitch which I wouldn't mind strengthening would be the goalkeeping area. I'm fairly content with Keeley as our starting goalkeeper for this year. I feel like the star ratings do him dirty, and actually, when you look at his ability, he is a very well-rounded goalkeeper. Behind him, we've got Isaac Warren, who I think will one time eventually be a starting goalkeeper for us, I'm sure. I don't think his time is quite yet. And then our next option is Finn Brundle, who, I mean, he's a good goalkeeper. He has two acceleration and five pace, so he's not getting off the line. And between them, wouldn't mind a little bit more competition. I was just looking at goalkeepers that we've currently got scouted. Antonio here, I think I added him to a shortlist during last year when I was looking at various Spanish players during one of my Spanish phases. Yeah, I go through phases. Sometimes it's Uruguay and sometimes it's Spanish players. Sometimes it's Costa Ricans. But Antonio here, for 140k as a backup goalkeeper with some good potential, I think would be a pretty blooming good option. Not sure if I want to use any SE slot on a backup goalkeeper. That is a concern, although according to his agent, he might be successful in getting a work permit. And if that is the case, for a 20-year-old who's this good, uh, I'm very tempted at that price. There are some teams who also want him. Uh, Spezia in Syria. If Spezia won him, he, he's good enough for me. He does have a minimum release clause of 140k. I, I'm going to try and get him for less than that, even though we really don't need to pinch pennies at this point. There you go. £30,000 saved. I did look at some of these other goalkeeping options. People like Gislete here, who's actually a free agent. and Well, not a free agent. He's on an amateur deal in Belgium. He looks like a pretty good goalkeeper, but at 22 years old, I hate the inconsistency and the fact he's not adaptable is a bit of a concern. There was also Gar Garcia here, who, to be fair, really isn't it that bad himself. He is also a free agent. I didn't realise he was a free agent. Uh, how much does he want? Will he get a work permit? Apparently, he's likely to get a work permit. Do I get him as well? Is there such thing as too many backup goalkeepers? I kind of like the look of, like the look of both these guys. If I want to sign him, I have to pay seven hundred thousand pounds compensation. I wish I'd known that before I went in to negotiate. There's a bit of a weird thing with football manager, right? Where if I approach to sign a player like this guy that he wants £700,000 compensation, if I make a bid, they'll just accept way less. You can see here, like, oh, probably 100 k for him. But because I went and offered him a contract before making a bid, he's now, when I get to the contract negotiation stage, not going to want to talk to me because previous talks broke down. You know what? I really like the look of Garcia here. I'm going to keep him on the maybe pile. I say the maybe pile like we need loads of piles. Uh, compared to Antonio, I don't think he's quite as good and he is a couple of years older. But well, if we were to pick him up for 120k, you couldn't really be upset, could you? I was just looking through players age 23 who are sorted by reputation. There is a player here who popped up that I nearly signed, if I'm not mistaken, a year or two ago. I think he maybe got released. Yeah, you can see it got released by Dortmund. I nearly picked him up then. I'm looking at Jakob Dudek now thinking, why didn't I make a bid for him back then? He looks really good. Model citizen personality. His wages are on the high side. But he does look very, very good, doesn't he? Could he play deep line playmaker? C could he do it? Probably shouldn't do it, but... I mean, he could definitely play deep line playmaker for us. I would have to train him to play defensive midfielder, and he can't really defend probably is better going forward too with 14 finishing. He's very good. My concern is going to be his wage demands. Um, but besides that, he looks like he could be quite good. Uh, I'm very tempted. He is going to be 20 kind of soon, so he's not exactly the youngest player in the world. I mean, I suppose the logical thing to ask here is, how does he compare to Zenner. He is probably the most like Zenner in our team. And if you compare the two of them, I mean, he's slightly different. Is he better? It's kind of a bit of a side grade. I'm going to make a bid. It's his release clause. We'll see what kind of wage demands he wants. I think they're going to be a bit too high. Okay, I think I've put in a bid for a fair few players there. Now it's time to actually try and negotiate some contracts. Sanchez is the first player up. Of all the players we've identified, I think he is the best. He could be an absolutely insane deep line playmaker at this kind of level. Love the kind of 16 passing technique and vision. It's so much higher than anything else out there. Has some, well, just really good mentals, some really solid technicals as well. 
My concern is his wage demands. How much is he going to ask for? £11,000. £11,000! Just as a reminder, our highest earn is on £4,500. Really, I think we have to set a soft limit here at Rugby Town of £5,000. I do not want to be paying more than that on wages, at least right now. And I fully appreciate for a championship club, that is ridiculously low. But the reality is, if I offer a few players, say £10,000, lots of other players are going to want that money as well. And suddenly, our poor little old wage budget of uh, £66,000 isn't going to go that far. To be fair, I could rejig a load of money into the wage budget and have transfer budget excess. But given how quickly we've been losing money at this club... Uh, it probably isn't wise. I mean, we definitely can increase the wage budget a fair bit, but just for sustainability reasons, I, I don't want to go silly. Right now, we are currently spending £47,000 a week on wages. If we go to the season preview here and then click on ourselves, we can actually see our salary per year at the bottom right. It sits at £2.4 million. Just for comparison, other teams at this level, Charlton, £14 million, uh, Sheffield United, £16 million. Um, Millwall 4.7 they are definitely down there even teams like Oxford 18 million pounds they're spending on wages per year so their wages are like seven times higher than ours so most teams in this league are now spending upwards of kind of 300,000 pounds a week on wages uh, you know what, maybe I, maybe I do need to up the wage budget slightly and reconsider my stance here. I feel like I'm doing my tax return. I'm now looking at the kind of expenditures that we've done over the last few years trying to work things out. Last year we spent £3.2 million on the youth setup. We spent £1.6 million on wages. It's not even wages that are crippling the football club. It's actually the youth setup that we have here, which is kind of my own fault, but it has led to some fun youth intakes and vibes which I think maybe balances it out. I mean, ultimately, the wage budget is, if it stays as I've set it out now, it's going to go up to around £5 million a season that we spend on players. But we are in the championship. And to be honest, maybe we just do have to spend that money. Uh, I'm going to do something silly here. I'm going to set a limit of £8,000. £8,000 is way higher than I wanted to go, truth be told. But I feel like it's kind of just a necessary evil at this point. He does want a relegation release clause. I'll lower that slightly to £2 million. But I do want to get rid of the, the sell-on clause in terms of percentage of sell-on. Top division promotional wage rise. I don't mind this being too high either, especially with a fairly low base wage. Ultimately, £1,600 when we're in the Premier League is not going to ruin us. I mean, you get like £80 million for playing in the Premier League. Yeah, we can definitely take a hit on these kind of contracts. Okay, well, 8K was maybe ambitious to start, but hopefully we can get there through the power of negotiation. I'll give you £300,000 as a signing on fee and upon promotion, contract extension of two years. How do you like those bananas? He didn't like them. I mean, I do really want Ricardo. I mean, I'm kind of changing the whole wage structure to get him in. £8,000, Ricardo. £8,000 he's taken. I think for that price, he's probably worth it. Of course, we do still need to get the scout report on him. Speaking of which, let's make sure that is prioritised. Okay, our offer for Antonio, the guy who I think could be a good backup goalkeeper, has been accepted. Spezia were also interested in him, but they've not made a bid yet. He wants to be a breakthrough prospect. He will be the backup goalkeeper. He wants a lot of money for a breakthrough prospect. Also, question marks over whether or not he'll even get a work permit. His agent told me he'd get a work permit. Why would his agent lie to me? Um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you £3,000, no, £2,500 per appearance, but you only get £2,000 a week. That's a fair deal. He's still asking for 3.2,000 in wages. Okay, a little bit of negotiating there. Two and a half thousand pounds for Antonio kind of hurts, but I think I'm coming around to the idea I do actually need to start spending some money. Like I mentioned before, Garcia, who we made an offer for originally, but then realized there'd be all the compensation. Our transfer offer's been accepted, but he doesn't want to talk to us. So that's a shame. And of all the players we've looked at, the one I'm least sure about spending big on is Jakob Dudek. I do kind of like the look of him, though. Could he play as a Trek Quartista if you trained him out on the right-hand side? I feel like that could be a pretty good role for him if he could solve his dribbling. I mean, he's only 19 years old, available for less than a million pounds. He wants to be an important player. I'll send him on an English language course, but I can't give him the other of these promises. He has accepted that. Now for his wage demands, he wants £7,000 a week. 
which is quite a lot. Gonna try and negotiate this down to 5,000-ish, even if it means increasing the signing on bonus slightly. Of course, the advantage of us increasing the signing on bonuses is, um, whilst it is gonna cost us money in the kind of immediate term and across the length of his contract, it will mean that when other players look around the dressing room, they don't look at his wages, which is what they look at, as a benchmark for how much they should be earning. Okay, these negotiations have been hard. He is not very compromising. 6,000 pounds, 350K signing on fee. He is going to accept that. Really like the look of this signing. 40% top division promotional wage rise is not insignificant. I feel like Dudek's the kind of player who I will sign if Guerrero leaves. I feel like he is the logical Guerrero replacement. That's not to say he is as good as Guerrero, but he's not a dissimilar mould of player. Um, yeah, whether or not I'd pay all the money that I've set up to pay for him if we don't lose Guerrero... Maybe a bit of a question mark there, but he looks like a quality player. You might remember last episode that we had a bid for Hamilton from Oxford. I tried to renegotiate it and then they got angry and then Rotherham made the same bid and I accepted it. Oxford have now matched that Rotherham bid. £375,000. We will accept that. Elsewhere, Perth Glory want Mosquera as well. Apparently all the A-League teams are after him. You know what? I'll let him choose between MacArthur and Perth. I have just noticed here, Sassolo have made a bid for Dudek. He's probably going to end up going to them, isn't he? Like, with respect to little old rugby town, can we compete with <laughs> this club? The answer's no. I hate to admit it, I'm really attached to the idea of signing Oscar Val Valladares? Val Val Valladares? We'll just call him Oscar. O-Dog. O-V. Um, he's very good, isn't he? I like the idea of getting this guy on a free transfer. Hopefully he signs for us. He got 30 goals last year playing for Olympia in Honduras. Have they got any other kind of good young players to be aware of? They've got some 16-year-olds. Are they any good? I mean, they can't join us till they turn 18. Uh, the answer to are they any good is no, they are pretty bad. <laughs> I've just seen a very amusing player transfer listed. Jake Garrett available for £3.2 million. We sold him to Luton, what, a year and a half ago for £7.5 million. Safe to say that transfer has not worked out for them. Uh, who could have seen that coming? Not me. Maybe me. He's not that good, is he? If the signing of Oscar doesn't work out, there are a couple of Senegalese players that I've actually been looking at recently. The first is Diang. I hope that's how you say it. This guy, loads of pace, really good finishing. Similar mould to Goldsmith in many ways. 21 years old, Senegalese. Um, I really like the look of him. Super consistent. Available, by the way, for twelve to £120,000. I mean, that would be a pretty good bargain buy. I don't think, however, he is as good as Oscar. If we compare him with Oscar, you can kind of see the comparison here. Oscar's just a far more complete player. The other man who I like the look of is someone who I feel like he's done d dirty by his star rating. Maki Suare here. Really good physicals, really good mentals. Not the best technicals by any means, but at 21 years old, turning 22 soon. He's actually kind of a really good, well-rounded player. He'd be someone who could play out on the right-hand side or at centre attack in mid. Part of the reason I want to sign him is because he's from Senegal. I'll be honest, I don't know what it is. The Senegalese, that they're, they're just taking my fancy at the moment. Um, but I actually quite like the look of him. He has the mould of the kind of player who's just good in the match engine. And sometimes you need some players like this. Of course, in a dream world, we get Oscar, uh, whom I am actually still waiting on a scout report for as well. I won't sign him without scouting him. Good news, no one else is in for him at the moment. Keely feels that he's underpaid. Uh, Keely, I'll be honest, you're on £350 a week. You've, you probably have got a pretty good point. Um... I mean, what kind of wage demand is he going to want? He wants £10.5 to £12,000 a week, and he wants a contract till 2033. I'm not doing it. I'm not. Enjoy your £350 and stop crying. And some of you at home are thinking, Jack, that's harsh. £350 a week, you are robbing him blind. A reminder, everyone, I'm on £220 a week. I'm not being a hypocrite. If I can live off that, he can live off it. Tell you what, that got very oddly passionate. Re really getting into things today. Oh, my word. I've just seen this. Uh... Heskiff's gone to Oxford. Heskiff's gone to... I really wanted to sign him, didn't I? That hurts. I'm in pain. Oxford City of the Championship. You've made a powerful enemy here. Oh, I'm fuming. I want to pretend that the fact that Ngoi's leaving for £110,000 cheers me up. No, it does not. No, it does not. I mean, we didn't need a centre-back signing, but Heskiff just looked like a no-brainer. Our centre-back options aren't awful. I just feel like... 
I need one more quality centre back. We've got Nkise, we've got Gasperi, we've got Mamadou Dia, the new addition. Very excited by this guy. I think he is a good third choice centre back option. Our fourth choice option is Andrea Andrini, the San Marie's international. You'll notice here I've got Chambers and Morgan kind of excluded from our centre back options. Chambers is probably on his way out of the club, and to be honest, I just view him as a, a bit more of a left back than a centre back. And then, of course, the other player that we have in this list is Morgan who last year was fantastic at left back, but with his aerial ability, I don't want him anywhere near the centre of our defence. Yeah, I feel like we still need that fifth choice centre back option. If I did want to promote from within, I could pr promote someone like Zhang Non, who uh, was out on loan at, um, who was he out on loan at last year? Colchester last year. Did have a bad performance in League Two. I think it's safe to say looking at him though, the 19 year old, not championship ready. I've just noticed that Christopher Wu is available. This guy was a Hall of Famer for us in uh, last year's Park to Prem. I say Hall of Famer. I think he joined us on £150 a week at Guernsey and played for us in the non-leagues. He was scoring in AFCON in real life just this month. He is a very good player. Um, He would actually be a quite good depth centre-back option. What are his wage demands going to be? I realise I could have asked his agent for them, but I've just got too excited. He wants £7,000 to play for us. I mean, he's good. Is he that good? Is he? No, I don't think he is. Don't get me wrong, he could be a good backup. I just don't really like the idea of using a foreign player slot on him. Uh, of all the centre-backs we've got scouted, Victor Coyote here looks interesting. Not particularly consistent, but 20 aggression has me excited. 21 years old, plays for Manchester United. He actually kind of reminds me of Heskiff, the guy we were looking to sign. Heskiff does have that speed edge over him, but Victor here is not a bad player. He's contracted to Manchester United, but presumably he's available for transfer, or at least wouldn't be too much for us. Uh, he would want some release clauses, which isn't ideal. Apparently Manchester United will want between fifty pounds and £500,000 for him. I feel like as a kind of fourth slash fifth choice centre-back option for a year for half a million pounds, He'd actually be quite a good pickup. He's got some mad potential according to our scouts, and I look at his current ability. He's a decent championship uh, kind of quality player. The downside for him is he's not played a minute of first-team football. Manchester United have never loaned him out, so he is the kind of player who maybe would just flourish under us. I love it how good his physicals are as well. I am just wondering, how does he compare to Gasperi? Because Gasperi is a very kind of physically orientated centre-back. I mean, when you look at the two of them here side by side, Victor's not a million miles away. Manchester United have accepted our offer. He wants to be a squad player. Fairly happy with that. I think he would be ahead in the pecking order than Andrani. And also, we do lack right-footed centre-back, so you would tick that box as well. He does want a minimum release clause to clubs in a higher division. I'm going to remove that. He doesn't want too much money a week, though, which is nice. I don't love all these different clauses, which would lead to his contract potentially spiralling out of control. I'm going to be nice and simple to him here. I'm going to offer him £2.2,000 just up front. Relegation release clause is locked in. And I'll be honest, that is the most simple negotiating I've ever had to do. Why can't more people be like Victor? Now I just have to hope no one else is going to come in for him. Because I actually quite like the look of this guy as a bit of a punt. I have just noticed he is going to turn 22 in four days. But yeah, you know what? He's raw. He's not really been given a chance. And 20 aggression. He's very angry. Don't bump into him by accident. This is the most productive I've been in a transfer special in seasons, I feel like. It's like I've decided the wage don't, wages don't matter quite as much. And we do need to spend money to kind of go up. And now I'm losing all sense of self-control. Ricardo Sanchez is going to join us. We're awaiting a work permit. Can the scouts get the scout report in sooner? I feel like I've already decided I'm going to sign him no matter what they say. Even if they say he hates important matches, he hates being adaptable, he can't live abroad... You know, he's inconsistent. I'm still going to get him. Uh, we've bonded at this point. I'll tell you what, folks, it's getting even better. Oscar. We're waiting on a work permit for Oscar. He can he's a backup defensive mid. I'm going to tell myself that. Uh, we found this guy looking for a defensive mid. He would be a good little versatile attacking option, though. I mean, no, my luck, he's not going to get a work permit, but it's an asset to sell on. Not that you should view people as assets, but this is football manager. We all do it. Okay, the first of the two Senegalese youngsters is here. Kamara is in the building. I mentioned last episode a temptation to maybe train him at wing back. And I'm still very tempted to try. Am I losing my mind thinking that he could be a wing back? 
I mean, ultimately, right now, we can only play center attacking mid or right wing. And within our system, obviously, they are the only two positions that we use that he plays. We don't play with a regular center mid. So it's a case of, do I play him at defensive mid or do I train him to play as a wing back? And let's be real. If we just look at him like this, I don't care what anyone says. This man is a wing back. I am training him here. He, you, you are a right back now. Also, I've just remembered he doesn't have a work permit. Can, can we apply for the work permit? We can. We'll apply for the work permit. And also, while we're here, we're just going to trigger a contract extension. So he's here for two years. I'll tell you what, everything is coming up Millhouse today. Kamara's work permit's been granted. His contract extension has been triggered. Everything, everything's good. Get the scout reports in for the players I've already agreed to sign. Tell me how good they are, football manager. Norman Hamilton's transfer to Rotherham is confirmed here. £375,000. Nice sum of money. Bit sad how this relationship soured with this guy. Was a great player for us in the non-leagues. When we got to League 2, he dropped out the first team and then he just started skipping training and being just really unprofessional. We loaned him out last year in League 2 and he just didn't kick on at Colchester. With that in mind, it's a chance to kind of sell him whilst he maybe still has some unfulfilled potential in the eyes of other clubs. Close to half a million pounds. Not going to complain about it. Victor Coyote's signing is also confirmed. Half a million pounds for this guy is not peanuts, but for a player who is already a championship quality player, at least as a backup at the very least, but has some good potential, I feel like you could do a lot, lot worse. Reasonable wages as well. £2,200 a week for him. Not wasn't our first choice, but in terms of just ticking that box of emergency centre-back option, he can do it, and he's definitely better than, and I hate to kind of do him like this. He's definitely better than Andrani. I'm sorry to the San Marino viewers out there. Your boy, he's just not very good, is he? Ah, okay. Oscar uh, has failed to get his work permit. We're, we're going to appeal it because I really, really want him. He just looks fun. Also, if the scout reports could hurry up. Oh, wait, wait a sec. That, that is coming in a day. I repeat, the scout reports are coming in a day. I'm getting it in my ears right now. Tell you what, if all these players I've signed without scouting turn out to have awful hidden attributes or bad potential, it's going to be a sad day because I really like the look of them. Uh, championship top goal scorer odds. You're going to be shocked to hear this. None of them are my players. Okay, Oscar hasn't got his work permit granted. I have the option to either allocate him an ESC slot or cancel the deal. Uh, here's the issue. Um, I can't delay it. There's no option to delay it on this screen. I don't know why that's the case, Football Manager. If you want to let me know, please do. Um, am I about to use my ESC slot on a guy who's Honduran, who I've not even scouted? I hate to say it. I think I am. Also, the goalkeeper we're looking at, Antonio, uh, we've got to appeal his work permit as well. If that one gets turned down, I'm not allocating him an ESC slot. His agent said he'd get a work permit. I feel like I've been betrayed. Okay, Oscar is here. We paid £7,000 for this guy. Here's the first sight we're going to get of his profile and some of his pros and cons. Is he any good? We, we don't know yet. Oh, I have to hit the accept button. I've got ahead of myself. That's awkward. Editing Jack, can we take that out of the video? What do, what do you mean we can't? We, apparently this is staying in. Here is Oscar Valladares. Oscar. Um, he looks quite good, doesn't he? 19 years old, four and a half star potential. We love to see that. Already a good championship quality player. He is inconsistent, but I'm willing to look beyond that. He's a free transfer. According to our staff, he's better than Jude. Is that is that an unfair assessment? Is he actually better than Jude? Let, let me just compare him here. I don't, I don't even think they're wrong. I genuinely think he might be better than Jude. Ignore the fact he's only got 10 finishing. It'll be fine. We have got our scout report in for Ricardo Sanchez as well. Apparently, he's very adaptable. He is inconsistent, which I don't love, but I do love him as a deep line playmaker. I feel like he's very, very good at this. You know, deep line playmaker, maybe on support, maybe on defend. I think evil works. I mean, if it backfires, it could backfire spectacularly. But he's got 42 caps at Costa Rica at the age of 21. He's got to be great. I will say now, I do feel like this is a, a riskier transfer window from me. I feel like maybe the risk is just inheritive with the fact that there's kind of fewer obvious upgrades out there. The, the reality is, obviously, we are a championship quality club that at best probably have the reputation of maybe a League One club, probably nearer a League Two club. If we go to England here then list clubs by reputation. And now if we scroll down this list of clubs, you can see we are here in the championship. We have two-star reputation, uh, just for a bit of context. Four teams in League Two have higher rep than us. So if we are going to sign players who are championship quality, 
We've basically got to find championship quality players who would join clubs in League 2. Which, when you put it like that, you realise how hard this transfer window's been. And it's for those reasons that we are just kind of having to take some punts on players like Ricardo Sanchez, who, whilst he's not flawless, he ticks enough boxes, I think, to be worth just picking up. Okay, Ricardo Sanchez's initial work permit's been turned down. We do have an ESC slot for him. That's not a concern. Of course, in the championship, we get four slots. We're currently using three of them, but for Aronson is about to have his kind of expire in August. So there will be the option next month to maybe bring in one more foreign player. Ideally though, these signings we've currently got going on don't need to use that slot and they'll get the work permits on appeal. Uh, Keely's talking to me about being underpaid. We can't afford it. It's a lie. Uh, I'm not changing my mind. I mean, we've already got a few unhappy players in Ingoma and Guerrero, probably our best two players. Why not just piss off our starting goalkeeper too? I was just looking here through players that we have currently got scouted who are just available to sign, sorted by ability. Per Lockel here, German centre defensive mid. Uh, look, he's super um, kind of bad when it comes to his adaptability and important matches, but very consistent. He actually looks quite good and capped at Germany's under 17s level. He must be decent. I realise I bigged him all up without actually checking his demands. He wants 11 to 14,000 pounds a week. Never mind. So I figured, given the fact that most of the first team positions that I was worried about maybe are taken care of, maybe we could start looking at some young players to pick up, just players with contracts expired, sort of by potential. There's actually some okay players in here. Players like Jan Anderson, like really, really quick player. Can only play left wing back and defensive mid when really you'd like him to be able to play left back. But he is just available as a free transfer. I have already chatted with his agent as well, and apparently he would be likely to get a work permit. Now, <laughs> I thought it was a good idea. And now look at these wages and I'm less sure. Maybe we won't go in for him. Um, good news is there was one other player I like the look of. Helder here. Again, I've already chatted with his agent. Reckons he'll get a work permit. 19 years old was playing for, well, various teams in the lower leagues of Spain, which obviously we love to sign players from. Is he the craziest player in the world? Not really. But at 19, and he's only just turned 19 in the last few months, I feel like you could do a lot, lot worse. His wage demand's more reasonable. Okay, I tell you what, this is the most reasonable I've ever seen a reasonable contract. I will I will give him a two-year deal on this. Please sign Helder. Saying all of that, it did say there that he might not get a work permit and he might need to use an ESC slot. We've only got one of those three at the moment. It could be that Ricardo Sanchez uses it if he needs it. Otherwise, Dudek will probably use it. If indeed he joins us. I still don't think he's going to join us. Okay, well, I'll take it all back. Apparently, we're waiting on a work permit decision for him. If we pick him up, that would be a mad signing. Like, don't get me wrong, he is not the perfect player by any means, but I feel like for the price you're paying for the potential he might have and his current ability, like, you could do way, way worse. I suppose the obvious player to compare him to is Jaeger, who, of course, we have just loaned out. A very similar player, German centre attack in mid. When you compare him with Jaeger, he is just a step above, isn't he? Apparently, Cologne are set to step up their chase for Guerrero. We had so many offers for him last episode. There has not been a bid for him in the last week and a half that we have been mashing continue here. Whilst I try and get all our other business done, this situation remains unresolved. I feel like it's a case of when, not if, we have to sell him. Of course, the real fear is the board just accepts a bit above our heads, but we can only really do what we're doing right now, which is kind of trying to make signings and just trying to prepare for life without him. Which, I don't know, when you look at the team and you look at the potential, I'd like to think we can fill his boots, but they are bloody big boots to fill, aren't they? I am being informed of a whole host of players in the final year of their contract. Of course, Chambers, I am still looking to sell. No one has really made a satisfactory bid for this guy yet, but with NDIA, the young Senegalese left-back, joining us, I don't have a spot for him. Zhang Yon is about to go back out on loan. We've uh, had a loan offer from Exeter, which I've accepted. It's going to be a bit of a make-or-break loan for this guy who we picked up for on a, a free transfer. Um, naturally... He's a free transfer, so I'm not expecting the world from him, but if he does show some promise, we'll look to renew his contract. And Ferrarinson's contract is also up. He is currently unhappy at the club and he wants a new deal. How much does his agent think he's going to want? Twelve to £15,000 a week. I mean, that is that is just obscene, isn't it? Like, if, if we now make this offer and he asks for that much, I, I don't know what to do, because our highest earner is on £8,000, and yeah, I mean, this is just, it's just unreasonable, isn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest, this is this is just I 
I can't afford it. If anyone wants to make a bid for him, please make a bid for him. Apparently, he might be unhappy that I'm offering him out, but he's already unhappy. So what's he going to do? Get more unhappy? I mean, probably, but yeah, it can't get worse. So I believe the next big date for us is going to be the 26th, because that is a day where we're going to find out about a few different work permit things. We have got... Some preseason injuries, and Goma's out for three weeks. He is going to now miss the start of the season, and Hines is out for a week. So he should be fine. But Ngoma, with that three week injury, is definitely going to miss the first game of the season, which is a week and a half away. That's annoying. Okay, the appeal for a work permit for Antonio hasn't worked out. I have the option to use an ESC slot on him. I'm obviously not going to do that. And elsewhere, I've seen here Helder isn't joining us. He's gone to play for Corinthians in Brazil. We are expecting a work permit decision on Ricardo Sanchez tomorrow. I am desperately hoping that he gets it without having to allocate him an ESC slot. He is that much needed deep line playmaker who can also, and I don't think I mentioned this earlier, he can also take set pieces. Sadly, as you can see here, he's not got that work permit, but I am going to allocate our final ESC slot to, to him. He is going to join us for £700,000 on £8,000 a week. Is it an overpay? M maybe a little bit. But you know what? I feel like he ticks a lot of boxes. He is the kind of player who can't play a whole host of roles, if we're being honest, to an elite level. But actually, as far as deep line playmakers go, he ticks so many boxes for us. And that combined with his above average set piece taken, at least for our team makes him a pretty ideal candidate to bring in. When you compare him with Timmy, he's not as good physically, he's not as good defensively, but in terms of a deep line creative spark in the team, he will be able to provide that. And I do feel like alongside uh, the defensive prowess of Jao Victor, who is a very good defensive player, they're really just going to complement one another. They're kind of two very opposite centre mids. And yeah, I'm excited to see how they get on. I feel like they're going to do quite well. I mean, I hope they're going to do well. I've spent a lot of money on both of them. I am now questioning, given Timmy's value of 8.6 to £9.4 million, pounds, uh, would it be stupid just to offer him out and see if we get any interest? Apparently, he is actually open to speaking to other clubs, so we'll just offer him out. We'll test the water, see if anyone has any interest there. I can ask his agent about some interest. Apparently, there is no one considering a deal viable right now. I mean, maybe someone will appear from somewhere. The issue I've got now is that if Dugadek doesn't get his work permit on appeal, I don't have any SC slot to, well, assign him, and I'm not sure if he's going to want to sign for us without a work permit. Annoyingly, if it was two weeks later, Ferrarens and our Icelandic forward will have kind of relinquished his spot, and he'd be able to join all fine. Uh, yeah, okay. Dugadek unwilling to join without a work permit. Do I beg him? I think we beg him. It's a positive. The work permit's a positive. It presents an opportunity to play abroad. Uh, we're trying to address the work permit situation. I feel like maybe challenging him and saying it's a challenge is the way to go. An issue that can be viewed as a positive. He has no desire to play in another country right now. Um, I'd urge you to think again. He's out. It's like we're doing Dragon's Den. He's out. He's not interested in a deal. I've been fired. Well, Jakob Dudek isn't joining us. That's annoying. Now, he did get a bid for Bakari here. He is a, an interesting player. He has some ability, but to be honest, I don't see him having a future in the first team. Um, one little interesting thing to note here is we use the regen face pack, obviously, in game. Um, one issue that Football Manager has right now is that uh, essentially when a player is generated in Football Manager, they're given a unique number, like a code, and it relates to that player. That is used for stuff like face packs. In the current patch, if a young player retires... Their code, their unique number, is reused by new players that appear in. So as a result, a player from Tanzania, who presumably probably isn't a white bloke, although he could be, I suppose, but he was probably a white player in a previous life, and then when he regenerated a couple of years ago as a Tanzanian, his ID, the number, was already associated with another regen who retired early on. That is something we're going to have to keep an eye out on. If you ever see players in my Let's Plays, in my series, with weird kind of pictures that don't seem to match their race... That's why in instances where that directly affects our first team, I probably will just swap their facial picture out for something more appropriate. Anyway, all of that is to say, I think I am actually just going to accept this offer for Bakari. I'm going to ask for five, uh, I was going to say 500k, no, I meant 50k. I'll ask for 47 and a half, 50% of any profit. They've accepted that. It's not a crazy sum of money, but 
It's more than we're ever going to get for him. He is nowhere near good enough for our first team. I've just noticed here, Charlie Setford is a free agent goalkeeper. Of course, we need a goalkeeper. Setford was an absolute monster for us at Guernsey once upon a time. You can see here he is wanted by some fairly elite clubs, which might make him difficult to pry away. But I do like the idea of picking him up. He wants to be a backup goalkeeper as well. Of course, he is English. And if the Antonio deal isn't going to work out, I need a new goalkeeper. Will he accept 4.5 thousand? He will accept that. That is quite a lot of money to offer him. And maybe it's just based on the nostalgia of last year's Park to Prem. But he is actually a really good goalkeeper and football manager. I say that. Ordinarily, he's really good. In this save game, he's not developed that much. Am I really about to just offer him all that money because of the memories? I really shouldn't, but I'm tempted to. I've got carried away, haven't I? I mean, look, he used to play for Ajax, so he must be good. Uh, I say that. His ratings, not exactly inspiring. I wonder if Garcia is done being upset with me. Of course, we looked at signing him potentially. Um, I suppose the issue with him is going to be the work permit. I'll tell you what we should really do, knowing that we're now using our ESC slot. Let's put work permit chance likely. And in fact, Garcia does show up in this list. Garcia, have you forgiven me? Can we move past our differences? Will you now talk to me? We ballsed up the negotiations last episode. He still doesn't want to talk to me. I'll come back in a week. I feel like I probably should just cancel the Setford deal, but we'll just leave it going for now. But be warned, it's probably going to end up with him not joining us. I mean, another option might be Nikola Dukanovic here. He is a Croatian youngster, really good shot stopper, lacks in other areas, but just as a backup goalkeeper for a few years, I feel like we could do worse than him. Uh, you can see here he is just listed by our scouts as someone with some good potential likely to get a work permit. Hmm, how, how much is he actually going to cost us? Because if he's going to cost us barely any wages, I mean, his current wage is £150 a week. As far as backup goalkeepers go, I kind of like the look of him. £200,000 has been accepted. If he gets a work permit, he could be the one. I don't, don't think he's as good as Garcia is, to be fair but he does actually want to join us. And actually, when you compare him with Garcia, he might even be better. Right, Dukanovic, what kind of contract are you looking for? Breakthrough prospect wants £400 a week. Oh, me and him are about to be best mates. He is going to love it when he sees the contract offer. I'm about to stick in front of him. I want it to be a three-year deal. We'll include that optional contract extension. We'll trigger immediately. I'll give him £10,000 up front, £650 a week. This is, this is my kind of signing. He probably is an upgrade on Isaac Warren as well, of course. The 17-year-old did step into the first team last year when Keeley picked up an injury. It was a bit unfair on him. He wasn't really ready for first team football. I think it would be beneficial for him to take a step down. So if we can get to Kanovic signed, that kind of takes care of that problem, I suppose. So I had already made this decision, but with Goldsmith leaving, we do need a new vice captain. And Kize to me just feels like a bit of a no-brainer. 11 leadership isn't the craziest, but it's the best in our team. He's got some good determination, some really good teamwork as well. And he is a player who's just going to definitely be in the first team this year. And I feel like between him and M. Goma, one of them should be on the pitch at all times. Also, tomorrow's a very, very exciting day because NDIA is about to join us. The young left back from Senegal. I feel like he is a man who's going to slot straight into the first team. We've been awaiting his arrival. He looks so, so good. Here he is joining the team, immediately rated three and a half star ability. For whatever reason, he's been put in the, the youth team. He's not meant to be in the youth team. He is very much a senior team player who, I hate to say it, might just end up playing at left back from the off. And the reason I hate to say it is because one of our best players last year, in fact, you could argue our best player last year, Ryan Morgan, was our left back, but NDIA is just way better, and he's just turned 18. It's insane. In fact, he turns 18 today. The game still thinks he's 17. I have here just blocked out a preliminary starting 11 for the upcoming game. Of course, it's not going to be the starting 11 because there's a couple of players like Ngoma who's out injured. I'm hoping Nkize is going to return from his injury in time. Should be fine, but this team here doesn't have any two kind of radical changes, I suppose. Sanchez is a big one, obviously, as the deep line player maker. NDIA at left back I think is a big, big upgrade. Our wing backs in this system create so much. Of course, Ricky D has kind of built up his entire career off that. He's got 60 assists for, for us from right back across the last four years. When you compare Ricky D and NDIA, 
I mean, based on how our previous fullbacks have done, NDIA should absolutely shine, even if it is going to be a big step up to the championship. Centre-back-wise, of course, Kasperi and Mkise are great. We've got the likes of Mamadou Doudia now in the club, who I think could do a job if needed in that centre-back area. Could also fit in at left-back in an emergency. Victor Coyote is another good centre-back option. I feel like an interesting thing to note with our team, but namely at centre-back is, there aren't that many standout players. In fact, the kind of quality of our team is very even across the board. We are very much going to be able to pick a team off form, which kind of excites me. Like I mentioned, Sanchez is coming into the midfield alongside Jao Victor, and amazingly, and it could still change, given the fact the transfer window is still open for another month, Guerrero and Ngoma are still together in our team with Soon Bell and then our new boy, Oscar. I'm just going to nickname him. He, he is now just Oscar. I hope we can all live with that. We'll just pretend he's like the Brazilian who went to China and never came back. This guy, though, I really like the look of. I think he could be fun. I think for the first game of the year, I am going to start him. But of course, we have got players like Ferrarinson who we could bring in. And if you compare Ferrarinson with Oscar, you can kind of see. In terms of overall ability, I don't necessarily think there's a world of difference between them. I know that Ferrarinson has that physical edge. I think it's safe to say Oscar is just a slightly more intelligent footballer. And given the fact he's 19... He needs game time. Another thing that I've not really mentioned is the increases in wages. But to be honest, with the exception of Ricardo Sanchez, who's the exception, I feel like we've been, for the most part, fairly sensible with the wage rises that we've given. Of course, there are some players that want new contracts like Keeley and Goma. They all want over £10,000. And whilst £8,000 is a lot, I feel, feel like Sanchez just is a big tick off in a position that we really needed. And when you look at our current kind of wage structure... The reality is that if I started throwing around £10,000 for every single start in 11 uh, player, well, if we did that with our current wage budget, we'd be left with £14,000 the rest of the team. I want to be sensible with the finances, even with all the money we've now got in the bank balance and all the profit that we've turned and could still turn. I know that we're going to bleed money this year. I'm hoping, however, it is going to be less than that half a million pounds we were losing every month last year. Now, sadly, we won't know if Tukanovic is going to get his work permit prior to the game against Sunderland, but given the fact he came up in the player search as work permit likely, that leads me to believe he will indeed get a work permit to join us. So hopefully that is the goalkeeping position sorted, and assuming it is... Uh, we don't need Charlie Setford anymore. I'm sorry, Charlie. I will say now, it has been a tricky summer, and I do feel like a couple of these transfers are risky, but we've had to take those risks because of the quality of the players out there. Like I mentioned and showed you earlier, there are League 2 teams of higher rep than this. That's made things tricky, but I would like you to let me know down in the comments, what do you rate of the transfer business? At this point, do I need to sell Guerrero? Do I need to sell Ngoma? Or do we keep them around? They are two players with over three years left on their contracts each. In fact, Ngoma has four years left on his current deal. We don't need to let them go right now. Of course, the board could still just accept bids over my head before the start of the year. Or indeed, before the transfer window closes. I can't do anything about that. Anyway, given the fact the Sunderland game is just three days away, I am going to wrap things up there for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. I feel like we've actually got some fairly significant transfers done this episode, which are going to be meaningful in our campaign. Of course, we've got a new Honduran striker in Oscar, who I'm quite excited about. We've got Sanchez at deep line playmaker, who, well, I hope he's going to be better than Timmy, because Timmy has been good for us. I just feel like I have to replace Timmy before... He bites me in the bum, not being good enough. And of course, with the likes of NDIA joining us from Senegal, Mamadou Dia joining us from Senegal, and the new right back, and I maintain he will be a right back, uh, Kamara here, uh, I feel like the future's bright. I feel like the future's fun as well. I can't wait to see how this team gets on this year. Anyway, with all the transfers that we've done, we have climbed up in the pre-season, kind of season preview bit, in terms of where the league and game predicts us to finish. We are now in 18th, which, if I'm not mistaken, is just above the webcam. So editing Jack doesn't have to zoom in awkwardly on this page. If I'm looking up here and we've had to zoom in awkwardly, that's sad. Maybe with a few more signings, we can find ourselves away from the bottom. Although when you look at the actual odds, there's lots of teams with very similar odds. We are still going to be, I think, in a relegation to mid-table scrap this year. Anyway, the last few transfer specials and indeed the episode before that have been long ones. I'm going to go away, have a weekend to prepare and ready myself for an upcoming season in the championship. If you have enjoyed today's episode, do drop a like on it as always. We'll be back on Monday for more action. And until then, take things easy. It's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.